Hello everybody, Jack here, and this is my first devlog. I've wanted to make games for a really long time, so in this video I'm going to talk about the context, because the reality of game development, it's one of those things where it's not really best to just start out in game development if you want to develop games. And that may sound counterintuitive, but I'll explain that for you as well. So this is just going to be me ranting about something I'm really passionate about. This video is more for me because I know if I make videos about the things that I do, I learn a lot more, I take it more seriously, I enjoy it more at the same time, and it's just a much more fulfilling process. So this is the first devlog for my first video game. And this first game is all about getting me in the habit of enjoying game development. So I'm not trying to make a game that's profitable, I'm not trying to make some even finished game, I'm not trying to make even something that's popular. I'm trying to make a game where my one focus is getting in the habit of enjoying development. And the reason for this is because Video games are incredibly complicated things, and you can easily work on them for years and years and years and not even have a finished product. And it's important to understand a lot about how the industry works and what stops people. If you want to be able to make money off of your games in the future. So, I'll explain how I'm applying these strategies in my life. Because the state of gaming is really sad. Um, it's become incredibly corrupt. And as a person who is hugely influenced by video games, uh, my father died when I was a child, and video games played a huge role in my life. I used to just read instead of socializing, and then I played games like RuneScape and World of Warcraft. And it gave me a place where I could meet people and these things, and it didn't really matter what was going on in my life. So even though my dad was dead and things at home were hard, it was like I had a place where I, I could interact with people and belong. And that experience changed things for me. It made things easier. It meant that no matter where I was in the world, no matter what, what, what was happening in my life, uh, there was something I could do that you know, just made it easier, I wouldn't suffer as much, be able to feel interested in doing something, you know? To feel interested in anything in life, in this world, while you're here, it's a beautiful thing. Even if that thing you're interested in is in a video game, that's, that's a beautiful thing. So these experiences really shaped me, specifically because I saw how what I was lacking... <laughs> This is one of my favorite birds. I think that's actually a woodpecker. But what I was lacking in my life, I was able to find ways to get, get it, basically, through things like video games and YouTube. And that's what makes it so tragic, how corrupt the industry is. Because most games now, especially modern games, they're harming you. They're harming their users. Um, we've come into an era where video games are trying to make money off of a few of their players who can pay thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars for perks in these games against other people and stuff. And if you are playing a game, you're essentially in a casino. You're gambling. It's so easy to get addicted. And most people, most game companies now, modern game companies, are actively trying to addict their player base and make money off of these individuals who just pay loads and loads of money. Cold whales. And this makes the experience for the regular gamer horrible. Just a horrendous thing because you're just trying to play a game, but someone's trying to manipulate you and gamble and make money off of you the whole time. So the game isn't made to have fun. It's not made to be art or a cool game. It's made to be 
a path to addiction so that you will pay money. And it's horrible. It's how most games are. And it's really tragic. They've become so corrupt that it's genuinely hard to find a good video game. And these days, I play more old games because there's more good, innocent, clean games that were already made before the game started becoming corrupt this way. And there's so many of them that you can play them, right? But it, it's so tragic for me because of what I went through. And this is what has put me in a position where I think that the best thing I can do is make a game that is what I like about games. But because I'm just one person, I, I have to be realistic with myself, right? And when you're trying to make video games, you, you should understand you're competing with millions of people. There are probably more young people who want to make money off of making video games than almost any other career path. Video games have become a very mainstream thing. Thus, some of this corruption is a result of that. It's very profitable for people. So, if you really want to compete, you have to be realistic. And because so many people are trying to do this, there's so many people who want to make games, you must focus on a competitive advantage. And this is the reason that you're probably better off doing something else if you're interested in game development. If you truly want to make a game and be unhindered in your ability to make that game, you need finances or time. You have two choices, and ideally, you have both of them. If you do not have money to spend, or you do not have a lot of free time, like if you work a full-time job, you can make a game, but understand you're you're swimming against the flow. You're going up the stream of the river. You want to be going down the stream, floating on something. So it's so easy. You can focus on other things, right? So you must understand the whole scene itself and how competitive it is. Necessitates that you have competitive advantages. And these advantages, the strongest ones in my belief, are money or time because if you're making a game and you have years of time to do it you'll do it well if you really believe in it it's going to you, you get yourself addicted to the creation process right like you can do it in a beautiful way but if you don't have the time to spend on it you need finances to buy your own time or someone else's time. So if you don't have time, like you're working a full-time job and you're in a relationship or something, and you don't have money, you have the least likely chance of being able to make your game. Whereas if you have a lot of time, you live a life where you have maybe two or three hours of responsibilities a day, including work, and that's it, that is a huge competitive advantage over most other players in game development. And you need to understand that game development is a huge time sink. It's like writing a book and making a movie and drawing art all in one thing. It, it requires a lot of just time making things and messing up and and you need to be able to progress through this without being overwhelmed by the mountainous task that is in front of you. So this is why it's so important that you have these competitive advantages. Because when you have a lot of time available, you can afford to make the mistakes and spend the time. And you, you, your life won't suffer because you still have enough time to maintain your relationships and your friendships and these things and develop your game. But if you're also working and doing all this, the chances of things working out are very unlikely. It's all about the habit of creation.
we get lost in our minds and wanting to be the best and wanting to make things and get credit for stuff, but none of that matters. Your degree, your education, what you're studying, what programming experiences you have, what art, what music experience, none of this matters. All that really matters is the habit of game creation. Are you able to start making something, even if it's simple, and regularly add to it? It doesn't have to be every day, but it should be once or twice a week at least. If you can do that, you will make a game. That is all that really matters. So don't get lost in everything else. And this is my first devlog, because I've been setting my life up so that I can have these competitive advantages. And I wanted to be able to have money to finance things and time. But now I've seen that that is an ideal, and I don't know if I'll ever have enough money where I feel financially secure. So I'm just going to take advantage of what I do have, which is an abundance of free time. I've built a life where I can have a good environment, where I have things, animals and plants that I love and can take care of, and I'm living with someone I'm in a loving relationship with who empowers me. I've built a life where I have everything that I need. I'm not wealthy, but I have my whole day, every single day, I have like an hour of work I should do. In reality, 20 to 40 minutes I, I do work. Sometimes more, but that's all I really need to do. And the rest of it goes to managing myself and the environment, taking care of the animals, the plants, being in a relationship. But even after that, I have time left over. I have time to afford. And I've been lost in this ideal of setting up this perfect situation where I have the time and I have the money. But I don't think I'll ever have the money, not in the way that I was thinking. So I should just do what I really care about now, which is get in the habit of enjoying the process of game creation. So that's the first devlog. The next one, I'll talk about how I found the resources and tools available and what my specific plan is for learning and getting involved with this habit of video game creation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao! And if you're interested in consultations, I offer them for $20 per 30-minute session. We can talk about a wide variety of different subjects. I can teach you something that you know that I know, or I can give you some criticisms or critiques about any kind of idea or process that you're trying to implement. Let me know and reach out. You can access the calls by going to calendly.com slash Pittman or using the top link of the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh.